If you are a dog or a cat, and you are within the sound of my voice, then listen up. If you are a gerbil, or a ferret, or a mink, or a mouse scurrying across the floor, stop and consider my words. Listen up, because I have news for you. It includes you. If you're a cow listening at the window, or a horse listening at the window, then listen closely. Don't pass by, because I have an evangel for you. Yes, for you. If you are a cockroach, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you're, you're, still, you're still part of the moving life on earth. You have a living soul. Therefore, you will, have, you will become a spiritual being. You cockroaches too. I'm sorry you have no representation. So you'll have to throw your tea into the harbor. You have no representation in the heavenly government. Don't let that make you feel bad. You cockroaches, spiders, ants listening. Um, especially the ants. I will say this to you. If there are any ants within the sound of my voice, take heart. Because you are used by Solomon as a, an example of industriousness and of uh, thrift. And so I honor you. Uh, you have no representation in heaven. Sorry. You don't get to vote. But you still get to benefit from those who are voting. Their vote includes you. You are a moving, living soul. Uh, so take heart. At that. If there are any chameleons or boa constrictors listening, once again, I'm sorry, we got no deal. However, because you are a living, breathing creature and you move, therefore, you are to be reconciled to God and you will not always be a chameleon or a boa constrictor. I know this disappoints at least one woman on the planet who has a pet boa constrictor. Maybe there are more. I hope not. I God, I hope not. If you're a parakeet, listen closely to me. If you're a finch or a hummingbird and you happen to be banging on the window or sucking nectar out of a daffodil outside the window as this show is being broadcast, pay attention to me. You were knocked silly during the flood of Noah. I found this out. Noah has birds on the ark. Therefore, you were knocked out of existence. The water in the flood, I'm sorry, this is your history. You have to live with this. Own it. Right? You are killed. Uh, most of you. But there's a representation of you taken on the ark. But most of you were wiped out. Here's how it happened. The water came. There was a canopy of water above that was opened up. And there was water from beneath the earth. The earth broke up and water came up. So the water that came from the canopy above wiped your silly winged selves out. I'm sorry. You know, I, I've seen like people go after birds with hoses and bang, you're dead. So just because you're in the air, don't get all smarty pants thinking that you survived the flood of Noah. Hello, you didn't because God took a representative of your sorry winged asses onto the ark. So I'm sorry. I am fond of you. I especially am fond of parakeets that can imitate human speech. Fantastic. We're not fooled for a second that you're actually thinking of these things yourselves. Uh, but it doesn't mean we don't like you. You're very colorful. Uh, you have sharp beaks. You do run into windows occasionally, which, eh, not too smart. But uh, having said that, um, I know that you have much inherent wisdom that cannot yet be articulated. So I understand that during the kingdom, you will be talking a common language. No, maybe not a common language, but a human language. Uh, Bob Larson is... a uh, cartoonist who depicted a lot of animals in his cartoon strip. I always laughed at one of his cartoon strips. He has a dog and the dog's going bark, 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 bark. And then he has a translation of what the dog's actually saying. And what the dog's saying is, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> That's about all you're going to get. Uh, and yet, I don't know, having said that, I look at Balaam's ass, who's asking an intel intelligent question of him. Have I done this to you often? Have you ever known me to stop in the middle of the road? No. Uh, then why are you being an idiot and hitting me with a stick repeatedly? So it was very intelligent. So uh, the animal creation will once again speak in the kingdom. And the lions will lay down with the lambs. People think that's figurative. It's not. And for those who insisted the kingdoms here i 
give you exhibit A and exhibit B. Exhibit A being the lines, exhibit B being the lamps. So listen up. All you animals within the sound of my voice, if you have pets, bring them, bring them close. I'm dead serious about this. If you have a dog, put it on your lap because I am now going to minister to the animals because I think animals have a sense about me. I, I, I think that they know I appreciate the fact of what I'm about to read to you. And they, in me, they have a friend. I'm not, I'm not saying Francis of a sissy. I mean, the birds don't land on my shoulder when I go out. But they give me knowing looks. They really do. I'll catch the eye of a, of a dog, and he'll give me a knowing look. I'll catch the eye of a cow. He'll give me a knowing look. I've never caught the eye of an ant, not to my knowledge. But it could be that the ant is giving me a knowing look. I wouldn't know it. I am like the Buddhists. I, in, in that, I, I loathe to destroy any life. Uh, except, no, there's no exception, really. Um, I even let the cockroaches here go because they have families. They're will, I'm willing to live with them. It's, it's fine with me. So bring your pets near because I have an evangel to give to them. And I have, again, animals recognize in me. I think the sound of my voice is soothing. Some people have told me this. I, I don't like my voice, but some people have said, Martin, your voice is so soothing. I'm happy for that. God gave that to me. But I think that if you could, if the animals could talk, they would sing my praises because I speak to them. And I'm speaking to them now. I'm going to Romans chapter 8, verse 20. Let's start with verse 19. For the premonition of the creation is awaiting the unveiling of the sons of God. The, the, the premonition of the creation, not just humanity, but the creation. There is a premonition. That is, it has a sense. The animal creatures and humans have a sense that something is impending. The world is going crazy. People are on uh, medication and drugs and they're on antidepressants and kids are on Ritalin because there's a sense of unease that something's, uh, something's happening. There is much more cases of, um, of malevolent spiritual forces influencing people. People are seeing demons. People are being influenced by demons. Creation has a premonition that something is up. The spiritual world is very active now because something is up. Something is on the horizon. We know what it is. It's the passage between Eon 3 and Eon 4, and it's the passage between the three good eons and the two, the three evil eons and the two good eons. Back to Romans 8. I'm reckoning, uh, no, uh, 19. The premonition of the creation is awaiting the unveiling of the sons of God. I'm going to keep going here, but I'm going to come back and comment on this. I got a lot to say. They're, they're awaiting the unveiling of the sons of God. For to vanity was the creation subjected. To vanity. That is uselessness. A cycle of futility. That's what vanity is. It's not looking in the mirror and saying, oh, aren't I good looking? That's not vanity. Here, vanity is uselessness. And all creation has been subjected to this. And it wasn't subjected to this w w willingly. The, the vanity was creation subjected not voluntarily. Not voluntarily. I talked about this in my Greater Than Adam series, in my Romans series, in my newsletter. Not, no creation, no created being volunteered to come here. We're all born into this world. And in the instance of the first creation, they were created on the sixth day. And um, nobody asked to, to be there. Adam didn't ask to be created. But here we all are. And as we're subjected to this realm of vanity, not willingly. Nobody in their right mind would volunteer. Nobody in their right mind would volunteer to be born, to be made a skunk. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken came first. And the chicken looked around and said, what? Is that a chicken? Why am I a chicken? And so it didn't want to be a chicken. When it found out that there was such thing as a man, it got pissed off because I could have been a man. I'm a chicken. And so it's humiliating for all creatures, not just humanity. And if you look at the animal world, a lot of them are depressed. Look at a dog laying there. It just, and his eyes look up at you. It's pathetic. I heard a dog the other day was howling. I was told that when dogs are happy, they go, yip, yip, yip. they yip, they yap, they bark. But when they're sad, they howl. And there wasn't a moon out. This was during the day. So this dog was groaning. All creation groans. 
for the manifestation of the sons of God, the premonition of the creation knows that their deliverance depends on our deliverance. Their deliverance depends on our deliverance because, well, first of all, many things depend on us, our deliverance. For one thing, Paul says that the Antichrist is not going to be revealed until we're out of the way. Israel's not going to be changed till we're out of the way. Romans 11, 25. You know, Israel's been given a spirit of stupor until the complement of the nations may be entering. Likewise, all creation, and this includes animals who have representation, who are important, we look down on them. They're just animals. But to God, they're so important that they have representatives at his throne. They care for their welfare, even if we don't. Those of us who are in tune with the Spirit care for the welfare of animals. And they sense that we, being the sons of God, are the key to their deliverance. Let me go on here. Let me just start again in 19. The premonition. Uh, I think the elements here are a before feeling. You know, animals can sense when a storm is coming. They get disturbed. Well, the premonition of the creation is awaiting the unveiling of the sons of God. And I took you to Colossians chapter 3 over and over again, showing you that we are now veiled. The world doesn't know us. But I think that some animals are smarter than some people and that the animals know us, but the people don't. The people think, ah, there goes another jerk. The dog says, that guy's the key to my unveiling. I can't be liberated from the slavery of bondage until that guy becomes a son of God. I can't wait for him to become a son of God. I get all this in the look of a dog. I can tell the dog is communicating this to me by a look. Will you hurry up and become, become a son of God so that I can be delivered from the slavery to corruption? I'm trying, Pooch. Believe me. I'm as anxious as you are about it. And it does say that the creation is awaiting this. So that includes us. For divinity was a creation subjected, not voluntarily, but because of him who subjects it. Because of him. Why does he do that? Why would he do something? So, mm, I should say, so um, disturbing is this. In expectation that the creation itself also shall be freed from the slavery of corruption. There it is. That the creation also, including animals, including your parakeets, your dogs, your gerbils, your your. your your cats, your horses, your cattle, your pigs, they're going to be freed from the slavery of corruption into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Doesn't mean that they're coming into our same expectation, but that they're going to come into a freedom that they don't now have. They're bound. They're bound now, just like we are. Oh, I feel so sorry for that dog. He's on a short leash. Look at yourself. Hello. You know how short your leash is? If you only knew how short your leash is. You're in worse shape, or maybe I'll say just as poor a shape as your dog. Your dog has the luxury of a short lifespan. Of course, your dog or your cat isn't going to have the glory, the depth, of the, the height of the glory that we're going to have because they haven't gone to the depth of degradation. Animals are, quote, fortunate in that they only know of the few, of the present. They, they only know that they, they feel like crap right now. Oh, God, I'm tired. Oh, this is terrible. Where's my food? I want my owner to come home. That's all they care about. They don't look back and mourn for the past. Oh, I sure do wish I had my brother here with me. They separated us when I was a puppy, and I sure miss him. They don't look at that way. They don't think of the future. I wonder if tomorrow my owner is going to buy that yummy kind of dog food. They don't think of that because they don't think of the future or the past. They're only involved with the present. And not strangely, our Lord has us consider the lilies and the sparrows and see how God cares for them by the day. And he does this to tell us, don't take any worry for the morrow, just like the animals don't. But they're all groaning. More on this tomorrow. I love this connection that I have with animals. And I'm glad that you uh, animals were out there today l l l uh, listening to me. And if you know of any friends who would enjoy this message, um, would you please somehow communicate it to your owner to replay this message tomorrow or tonight and to bring your friends because this evangel of Romans 8 is for you too.